What's going on, everyone, and welcome into a brand new episode of Snaps. This is our college football week nine review, week in review, if you will. Recap all the action from yesterday, or at least a few of the biggest games. Massively fun day of college football yesterday. I mean, the noon slate was one of the best that I've ever mm -hmm. seen. I don't think I've, I, I, I mean, I don't think I'm exaggerating. Since I've been doing this job, I can't remember a noon slate where like four or five games all came down to an overtime or a field goal that was blocked or a field goal that was made at the end. It was fantastic. But on today's show, we're going to talk a little uh, Alabama being able to shoot a start. Then we'll head over to the Big 12 as Texas survives. Oklahoma does not. Uh, Washington out dueling USC out West and then UGA rolling right along. Let's start. With LSU Alabama and uh, mm. look, Alabama handles LSU in T Town, and I think a few themes are obvious here, Aaron. The first of which is this is a big win for the old sports cliche: you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? Um, a lot of times we get tired of cliches because we hear them so much that they they sort of lose their meaning. But you know. Generally, the only way you end up becoming a cliche is if you're rooted in some sort of just core truth. And and we said it all week long, this is going to be a test of that theory. And well, LSU's weakest mm -hmm. link looms largest here. And and as far as um, look, I mean, as far as this LSU team goes, you've seen them twice now play against playoff caliber teams, and both games played out pretty much the exact same way with Florida State yep. and Alabama, where the offense, because it's so good, fought hard, kept you in it early, but ultimately that defense is just entirely mm -hmm. too flawed to help you win big games. Well, that's where I was. I'm, I'm not torn on the fact that LSU's defense is bad, but I'm also torn on the fact of like how much Alabama's offense has truly improved this season. And I think that that has to go into this a little bit too of like, yeah, they took advantage of a you know a defense that had a bunch of freshmen playing the secondary. Wingo was not playing, which was a huge miss for the Alabama front, you know, to be able to get after to Milrow. But I do uh, I, I, I don't even know. I don't know though, dude. I, I don't think it makes a difference. He's been hurt, he's would, been hurt all year. The pass rush L LSU doesn't help. have a pass rush, they haven't had a pass rush all season long. I don't know. May, maybe I don't I don't think so, but maybe. Okay. But I, I want to go to the positivity of, of like Alabama to me still over the past few weeks has grown as an offense. Like they have, yeah. they've found their identity and for Jalen Milrow to finally just say, you know what? I may be the most athletic dude on the football field. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't really shown off his legs this year. Like he has been adamant. Like I want to be a, po a pocket quarterback. I want to be a guy that sits in here and, and throws the ball down the field. And at times he sits in there a little bit too long and gets sacks and negative plays. But guess what? He'll then create an explosive play through the air that will make up for all those you know missed opportunities to to possibly run the football. Where I, last night was more of an urgency to just take off and go, and you saw the explosiveness. You saw that first burst, that second burst. The you know put the foot in the ground, get north, and just run right by defenders. Like that's dangerous. So yeah. I do want to give credit to Alabama offensively. Like they are coming into their own a little bit here right now. Jalen's taking care of the football. He's not really making a lot of mistakes. He got away with a couple of throws last night, but he's going to be a risk taker. And, and that's just going to come with the territory of, of who he is as a quarterback. But when he can go run for 155 yards and four touchdowns and, and force a defense to be able you know, be more disciplined in their rush lanes, uh, he's going to be a tough cookie to, to slow down the rest of the season. So I do want to give props to them. Well, LSU's still... defense, man, is just... Oof. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you're right. I look. I started this talk about LSU because obviously it's what the post came on last night. Yep. And that's kind of like where my head goes. But the story here, you're correct, is Alabama. Um, yep. this is a very good. This is a flawed Alabama team that has just gotten better and better, and better mm -hmm. all season long, and now they look like they're rounding into form to win the West and go challenge Georgia in the East. So you're yep. right. And, and Jalen, look, Jalen Milrow is the second highest rated passer in the SEC coming into this. So he's been efficient. He's been explosive. And then this was the ultimate realization of his legs. 11 of 14 on third down and just <laughs> live. It felt like every single time it was third and 10, Jalen was just like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to run. Go. And, and, and it was just, and it was just unstoppable. LSU well, had well, no because, answer for it. Well, these third and long situations, they're they're so scared to get beat over the top with their their DB. So you got yeah. linebacker dropping in depth and safety's dropping in depth. And you know, if you give him any sliver of space to just take off and run, 
he's going to do it, which is why I kind of like to me leaning into the game. I said it last week on our show. I was like, I would rather put pressure on him and force him just to get the ball out now and not let him sit you back. Can't, but, but LSU, but LSU can't get pressure. That's why I mean, you need to bring six. You need to bring five or six. Like, you need to bring yeah. one more than they can protect. So yeah. I, I just think they gave him they 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 gave him too much time to get through his reads and then decide, okay, nothing's there. Let me just go run and get the first down. And yeah, a little look, bit maybe was, was very cautious. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, I know there were some numbers out there about him being like horrible against quarters, and so maybe they thought they could emulate that, but the 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 thing is, Jail Miller being horrible against quarters probably is more like okay, if Texas is running quarters, their front four was getting home, yeah. right? And, and so you have the coverage and you have the rush. Uh, I, again, I I don't I, I don't really too, I, I don't come is, out of it with listen, like go ahead. Listen, LSU LSU made the big mistake like, on offense. Like it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like this had an opportunity to be not to the extreme of the Washington USC game, but both teams were tracking to get in the 40s. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, LSU had the big drop. Um, was it Mason Taylor? Had yeah, a big Mason drop. Taylor drop. They had you know, a couple full start penalties and a holding penalty. Like, Which Brian were, Denny shined. Brian Denny, if you're an they, Alabama fan shined, and you're in that right. number, you should. But they uh, shot themselves in the foot. They shot themselves in the foot offensively. They could have kept going and made this a four-quarter game. And Yeah, but that's also like – But to me, that's also so indicative of the impossible situation – that this LSU offense is in because this is yeah. a championship offense. This is not a championship team and football is the ultimate team game and a drop on second and 17 that would have set up third and five should not feel like the difference, right? Like that, that should not matter, honestly, but it does for LSU. Yes. The defense is with so the, with the way your team's does. playing, the way the game was going, you, there was a feeling that we we're going to have to probably score yeah. every single drive going forward. And then, and then you had a great defensive play by Alabama to uh, to come over the pick. Ball batted up in the air, and you know. So look again, the story here is an Alabama team that is clearly uh, this. Look, Brian Kelly said it this week that uh, you know we're a year and a half into building this thing at LSU. Alabama, Georgia been doing this for a while. This is just clearly a better Alabama program, the top to bottom. The talent, <laughs> the talent was just you know more fleshed out and better. Then what else you brought to bear? Brian Denny was fantastic. Forced a lot of false starts. Forced a lot of weird mm -hmm. snap problems. Um, so credit to the Tide, man. Big time yeah. job getting it done. And now looking a little frisky, heading uh, over uh, or heading you know into Atlanta here in a few more weeks to take on Georgia. So good job, Alabama. LSU falls. And um, yeah, NBA fans, the wait is over. Basketball is back, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports movie partner of the NBA, is celebrating with an unbeatable offer. Right now, new customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets for throwing down $5 on the NBA. Win or lose, like it doesn't matter. You start the season with an instant dub. And always remember the DraftKings parlays, everyone's got a shot at even bigger basketball wins so string together multiple bets in the same game or build a parlay across multiple games for a shot at making your payday even sweeter bottom line is basketball is more fun when you're in on the action so download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code tbob t-b-o-b new customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly for betting just five dollars only on DraftKings sportsbook with code t-bob t-b-o-b the crown is yours now to the big 12 we go texas it was a another week of very close games mm -hmm. for your uh big 12 favorites one survives one does not let's start with texas as they managed to endure and uh, survive a just flurry from Kansas State. I mean, Texas came out and they looked incredible. And it's funny because in the in the in, in our text group for snaps, you know, Brum's Texas, and we're all talking. We're like, man, dude, tech, you know, we may have to eat crow. Mm -hmm. Like, Texas is really good. Sark is awesome. Blah 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 blah. Um, they they have this great play design. It's like fourth and one. Uh, they line up like they're going to run the tush push with Malik Murphy, which makes all the sense in the world. And then it sort of flips into a belly flip. They yep. go 50 yards or a touchdown. And at that point, it's like 17 zero. You're like, okay, Texas, let's mm -hmm. ride. But somewhere he, he actually, no. And then even at the beginning of the second half, I forgot they forced a big turnover to score. And I think they went up like 24 seven 
Yeah. And it just felt like, oh, okay, you know, uh, it was a butt whooping. Yeah, it looked at, and then dude, credit Kansas State and Chris Kleeman, they're defending Big 12 champs for a reason because they found a way to dig down deep, create turnovers, create plays, and make this thing uh into a game and eventually force overtime, just could not get the comeback across the finish line. Well, listen, it, it goes to the quarterback position. Like Malik Murphy had a, he had a, start, a strong start in the first half. I mean, it was bombs away. It was like find A.D. Mitchell and just throw that bitch up and let him go get it. And it was impressive. Right. You're like, all right, well, maybe he's made you know massive improvements from week one to week two. Like that's the jump you would hope to see from a young quarterback. But still the inaccuracies, the, the short arming throws where the ball is just kind of dying and, and going at the feet of the receivers – almost threw another interception there in the first half in the red zone that could have cost him some points. Like, this was a game where if yours was healthy, uh, Texas would have won by 20. So my, my big two takeaways from this game right now, and I'll, and I'll start with Texas first, is, you know, you, without your starting quarterback, if, if you had Quinn Ewers, I think they win by 20-plus. I think this secondary for Kansas State, you saw them very susceptible. Texas has too many athletes. It just – you figured out what Malik could and couldn't do. You made the second half adjustments and he just, he's, he's a little bit too inconsistent, you know, a little bit too reckless with the football at times, almost throw a pick in the first half as well. Short armed a ton of throws. It just tells me he's not, you know, doesn't have that confidence just yet, but you survived and you won. And I think to me, yeah. Texas is in the spot right now where they are when they're at their best they're one of the best teams in the country. Can you continue to, to survive and win, especially with your backup quarterback? And yeah. then the second thing, kind of to that point, you know, Kansas State had an interesting call where they they went for it um, in the OT instead of kicking the the yeah. goal to put into double OT. I, I I will never fault a coach on the road as an underdog going for it in that situation. Mm-hmm. But Texas, you had been the better offense in the second half. You you'd caused the turnovers. Like Texas had really, you know, they had six points. Um, you know, or, or three points in the fourth quarter, they had the field goal. Like they were struggling offensively at that point in the game where you kind of had some mojo going in the right direction. So I, I agree. I would have kicked it and said, our offense is playing better right now than Texas is and force a double overtime. But once again, like I'm never going to fault a coach for going for it on the road when, when you're, when you're an underdog. No, so I'm I mean, kind of torn on that. Hit, well, no, but you hit the nail on the head. I mean, that is the nuance there, right? Yep. Is that, that's a decision that we do applaud, um, and I'm in agreement with you. But to your point, game flow kind of dictated that maybe. And that's why these situations, you know, for all the talk of, like, these sorts of just head coach decisions being purely analytical. Um, and for those that don't know what we're talking about, Kansas State had first and goal. They get down to fourth and goal from the five, and instead of kicking the field goal to tight and four second overtime, they end up going for it, and they don't get it, right? Um, but like, that's why, yes, uh, you need to rely on analytics and everything for things like odds and whatnot. Mm. But at the end of the day, you also have to feel those decisions in terms of how the game is going. Well, and, you know, a lot of the Oregon Washington game, you know, it's fourth down Oregon in its own territory goes for it. But like the, the way the second half had been going for Oregon, once again, like your defense had been stopping them and Washington, I think maybe scored one point there in the second half or one, one, one. Uh, one touchdown like they yeah. weren't moving the football like I still would have taken my chances with my defense forcing Washington to go 90 yards and see what happens but you know you're on the road and you're trying you to want win to the kind game, of knock yeah. them out there like you know you, you understand it's, the reasoning but like I still am a big fan of like you have to feel the flow of the game and what is going on your defense for Kansas State was winning at the moment and your offense was scoring points yeah, look, it's a situation where really I don't think there's a wrong decision, right? No, uh, I, agree. I kind of agree with both ways that you wanted to play it. They played their hand. They came up short. And yeah, uh, if I'm a Texas fan, I'm ecstatic here because like you said, this is survive time until you get Quinn Ewers back. Mm-hmm. And uh, and this is a defending Big 12 champ. Like This is a good Kansas State football yep. team that wasn't good early on in the season, but has found their way, found their identity, and they've gotten good. So this is a big win for Texas, and uh, Longhorn fans should be very, very excited about it because he's, again, I know this is kind of like, it's a little rote, a little boring to say because it almost feels obvious, but the big takeaway is that these are the games that Texas has lost in the past, right? And now you've seen a, a couple of weeks in a row in which they've avoided Losing those, even though to your point, Aaron, again, it feels like the script with Malik Murphy 
for the first couple drives is great. And then it's kind of fallen off the rest of the game. They got to figure out a way. You've yeah. seen back to back weeks right now where, yeah, I get, I know 100%, but like you've seen back to back weeks where he's, he is turnover prone and will just kind of throw the football up and doesn't, you know, doesn't have, he has the touch down the field, but he doesn't have the intermediate touch where he can get up and over defenders. You know, the ball kind of just flat lines at about, you know, you know, 10 feet in the air, DBs can, you know, linebackers can get up there and make plays on it. And, and, and look, and he made some great plays outside there. there there's a fourth and four with seven minutes to go. That was massive where Texas had to, to get it. Uh, Kansas State had all the momentum in the world, and Malik Murphy came up with a beautiful play. So good on Sark. Good on Texas. How about you, Longhorns, mm. moving along? Uh, and as far as not controlling their own destiny, uh, don't worry about any of that, right? Like, well, there's two things. First off, in a fair world, the playoff committee told you that if every other conference takes care of their job, the Big 12 is left out. Yeah. But – I mm, a twelve and real. one Texas. That's what I'm saying, bro. Ooh. I mean, I can feel how hard the playoff committee is all the way here in Louisiana. Just mm. if, if 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 they are presented with a twelve and one Texas, like yeah, I, I mean, if Oregon beats an undefeated no, Washington, no, 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 bro, I bro, think bro, that bro, bro, bro. I get oof. it, I get it, I get it, I get it. That's oof. what I'm saying. No, no. Like I said, in a mm -hmm. fair world, or at least mm -hmm. in a consistent world. What the playoff committee laid out here in week one says that if everybody else does their job, Texas is left out. All I'm saying is be real fucking interested yeah. to see if they would actually leave Texas out of your reach. Like, and if you're a Texas fan, like somebody will probably fall. This shit never plays out. Yeah. Like nobody ever, it never plays out as easily as we think it's going to. Mm -hmm. So uh, just look at Oklahoma, who goes mm -hmm. into Stillwater last year, a bedlam. And oh my God. I mean, Aaron, there is something deeply, deeply funny about um, Oklahoma dominating this series, right? All week long, I've been yep. bitching about how everybody talks about how they love Bedlam, but there's actually no good moments. Oklahoma had a 91 to 19 advantage in the uh, in this series coming into it. So there was something deeply funny to me. That in a series that Oklahoma dominated for over a hundred years, yeah. over a century, that the Cowboys and Gundy are going to walk away with bragging rights as this game's mm. put out the pasture. Unbelievable! This this reminds me a lot of my relationship with my big brother, where he was oh. always you know six years older. You know he would beat me up. You know there was never really a competition. Well, I got a little bit older, and we would play like say ping pong, and he would still beat my butt. But as soon as I won one time. Yeah. And he wanted that rematch. I'm like, no, we're done. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. And he would get, he Bro, would get up. so mad. And I do yeah, it all the time. Up, like, he dude. will beat me in everything, like over and over. And he's just a better athlete than I am. But as soon as I beat him one time, he wants to run it back. I'm like, no, like, time's up. I got the best example of this. And this is hilarious. I'll be real quick. We were playing spike ball on the beach. It was yeah. me and great game, a buddy, and then him and a buddy. And we won, and it was Sharon, my wife's turn to play with her friend against me. Like, winner stays on, loser goes off. Yeah. And my brother, my brother went off. Like, it turned into like a full on fight of like, no, we're running it back. I'm like, Josh, you lost. Like, sorry. Like, you have to go sit out. If you want to run it back after Sharon plays, you can, but you got to go sit in the corner and watch this one. And he wouldn't leave. So, like, we ended up like not playing the what? rest of the day because he refused Wait, to let what? Sharon come. That, yeah. Bro, but Josh, hey, come on, you know come you, on, Josh. Get your, you come win, on, you gotta get you together. Win, little brother wins. You take the ball and you walk away. And hey, yeah. I'm sorry, big bro. That's what I it kind of feels like is, for Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. That is an insidious little brother strategy. Although not the spike ball story. The spike ball story. That's yeah. just Josh being a bitch. Yeah, like you got to take one. your L and you got to respect the rotation. And if you want to yes. get back on the table, you can get back just mm -hmm. after the next game. Um, wow, <laughs> that that's actually the perfect metaphor for this game because. Yeah, oh, you dominated, and now nobody's going to talk about it for years. We're going to remember this mm. game. I mean, so so Oklahoma State won for the second time in a row in Stillwater. That's the first time they've done that since 1930 and 1932, 90 years ago, guys. And 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 to be clear, okay, so actually, first off, I know we're going to talk about it from the OU perspective, but I don't know what sort of mulleted magic mm. Gundy has, but like – Oh, you should be dead in the water. Everybody yeah. transferred out. It was nothing but bad headlines all off season. They started awful this year. How in the fuck do we look up and they're ranked seven and two 
five and one in conference and maybe have the best running back in the entire country. Yeah, like and, I, I, I and don't understand. Path, and a clear path to the the Big Twelve championship because they yeah. have the the you know three of the teams that are newcomers to the Big Twelve that were a group of five teams last year. That UCF, that Houston, are awful. and BYU that have all struggled. So like, you all of a sudden you look at like, man, Oklahoma State's gonna be feeling good, playing with a lot of confidence, you know, and, and gonna be ten and two. All of a sudden, they lost to South Alabama. But I had South I Alabama know, this early I this know. year. Like that's not a bad team, but they get their ass whooped thirty-three to seven. Thirty-three to seven. That doesn't make any sense, dude. That doesn't uh, make listen, any I, sense. Oklahoma was the better team in the game yesterday. You think they shot themselves in the foot? Three turnovers. I mean, that that to me that was the difference in the game. Like, I, I, yeah, but they, that's they, the thing they, is that Oklahoma was kind of trading on turnover luck earlier in the season, though. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like, yeah. Like they were the, one of the top turnover teams in the entire country, but now we've oh, the quarterback seen was clearly... horrendous throwing picks, and he's he's cleaned it up. I mean, he's cleaned it up. I mean, that's the biggest difference in the game. Like three turnovers to one in a three score game on the road. Like you just can't go do. Yeah, that. but I can't say better team when Oklahoma State mm-hmm. is a time of possession of thirty seven minutes to twenty two. Yeah, you know but what I'm just, saying. That's, but that's too. That's just that's mostly because of different philosophies of how like. Time of possession nowadays is not a stat you you look at like, oh my God, look, they just dominate the game because they have the ball longer. Like Oklahoma's an up tempo, fast paced offense. Oklahoma State wants to run it and just beat you up. So like Yeah, but that's it, what I'm saying. I'm gonna I'm just but but I'm not gonna but I exactly though, but I have trouble saying better team when Ollie Gordon the second went for 33 carries, 137, two touchdowns, right? Like that is he was off to a slow start though. Like Oklahoma State, I mean, it was that's how the running game works. That's how it fucking works. We just don't know anymore because nobody does it like that anymore. But that's how it works. It fucking wears you down like erosion, like water on the rocks. And by the third and fourth quarter, that certain shit starts to hit. And you could feel Oklahoma's will break a little bit at the end of that game. It's a bad loss for Oklahoma. It is a it is a two weeks ago you you are potential number one team. Like if, if you would have done the 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 playoff rankings two weeks ago, they probably would have been the number one team in the country. Mm. And now it's back to back losses. And you had a good West Virginia team coming in. Um I mean it's I no, still think it, it like what would we said at the beginning of the season? Like if, if if Oklahoma can get to nine wins. That's a good year heading into nope, the SEC. No, yes. no, 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 yes. it yes, though, Aaron, it shipped, no. It No, 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 no. We said that, but that was without beating Texas in the Triple R. So you just move the goalposts. Year. You move it on them. That's fair. I'm saying that's what happens. Yeah, like that's what mm-hmm. happens with expectations. You're talking about. Look, I'm not talking about what's logical or right. I feel it. Like, like you yeah. said, if, if we go back to the beginning of the year and after we've seen this team, well, yes, nine wins will be good, all that stuff. But, bruh. That ain't what these fans were thinking. Well, no, I, I, listen, I just had Auburn more. and, and Auburn, Auburn just like that too. Like Auburn, if you would have told me at the beginning of the season as an Auburn fan that hey, we're gonna go seven and five with close losses to Georgia and Ole Miss, and we're gonna have a four game winning streak heading into the Iron Bowl, you would have taken that like hell yeah, year one, we're in a bowl game and we got seven wins and had some competitive games against the best teams in the country. Take and run. But now but now, since you had those close losses, you think that, hey, we could have won a couple of them and, hey, we should win the Iron Bowl and, hey, we should be eight or nine wins. All of a sudden, it's just like, whoa, pump the brakes. Like, you were a team just hoping to make a bowl game this year. Now, all of a sudden, that, that expectation's gotten way up. So I get the moving at the goalpost. I'm just saying, I still think this is a good Oklahoma team. They're just not – they're not They're not a playoff team. And, and we, we've, we've seen that for two and weeks you now. you know what, Aaron? The defense kind of sucks. For all the talk of Brent Venables in this defense, and they were so good early on. This is now three weeks in a row in which the defense has allowed big plays and they have failed you at the biggest moments. And, yeah. you know, look, don't make me put the cowboy hat on sooner fans. Mm. Y'all got real mad at that video. Talking about, you know, I'm not sure about Brent Venables, the culture and everything. And look, I get it, right? Y'all were all victory lapping on me and, and I understand why, but how you feel about Brent Venables today? You know, don't talk to me. Don't I don't look. I'm asking you. I don't think there's, I don't think there's a a a there's what? they're a very passionate fan base, just like yeah. a lot. Yeah, but there I don't think there's there should not be a burden the boats mentality right now. Oh, uh, I look, you're asking for rationale. Look, all I'm saying is if you're in Oklahoma, if anyone you do something for me. Would you look in the mirror and I want mm-hmm. you to ask yourself, how do I feel about Brent Venables? And that's all. That's all I want you to do. Because to me, it feels like a pretty fascinating journey from the penthouse to the outhouse within a month. 
you are a made man, and then every single thing that you've done since you became made has been bad. And now you lost two in a row. Mm-hmm. And the season's kind of reeling. And you lost Bedlam. And little brother yeah. wins, even and though you always want to. That. Look at that. Take your ball and go home. Unbelievable. Um, how about the duel out West? So unfortunately, Aaron, I just had to watch the YouTube highlights of this. I still, I, I haven't gotten to go back and watch the game yet. Cause this was during the, uh, the LSU game that I had to cover. Um, but my God, this thing just seemed like a quarterback, big play electric factory. Dude, if you, if you had the, if you had the split screen where so I was going back and forth between the, the two games of the LSU Alabama, and then this game, it was like if you love quarterback play, you're in heaven. You're watching yeah, four sure. of the best quarterbacks, you know, go at it. Uh, you know, to, to just unbelievable performances, big plays. You know, Caleb was absolutely tremendous. Um, you know, love the video at the end, just of how emotional he was. I don't know if you saw that or not, but you know, he was up with his, his, yeah, his people family. Like, kind of, people were like clowning him for crying. And so yeah, I was like, it's like, fuck dude, out of here, bitch. Off. You haven't been yeah. in the fight. Yeah, like, like, that, I mean, like that dude cares, man. Like that's every, yeah, that's the whole thing that pissed me off. You have into this, yeah. That's the thing that pissed me off when uh, what's his name said something about like him quitting on his team and just go get ready for the NFL. Like he cares. Like these are your boys, man. Like you yeah. should know that as a former player, like what it means to be in that locker room with your team, especially as a leader, as the quarterback. It's just it's different, and and you you know I appreciate so much of just him kind of letting those emotions show a little bit. Uh, just yeah, it really shows you how much he cares. But he was terrific. Michael Penix was terrific. It, it came down to, you know, same thing kind of with, with LSU Alabama. USC was driving down, I believe, points. three at the time. It, they get a penalty on a holding, and then he gets sacked. So Washington, they punt the football. It was kind of a decision, do you go for it, do you not? They punted it, and all of a sudden, next play, Dylan Johnson reels off like a 60-yard run. And it's just like – Well, it's, and, it's and we season. should – for all the quarterback talk, we should talk about Dylan Johnson because – well, and then you could also see USC's defense because they're just so bad well, at stopping yeah, right. the run. It's unbelievable. Seven but Dylan Johnson. 316 they gave up. Dylan Johnson, 26 carries, 256, and four touchdowns. Can you imagine averaging 10 yards a carry on 26 mm. carries? Because that's exactly what Dylan. And, and to be clear, um, we now look at Washington's win over Oregon. Washington's wins here. This team is at its best when they can get Dylan Johnson going. And this is now yet another game. Like people don't want to give Washington credit for this. They only want to criticize because some of these games are close and that's fine. But this is yet another I'm game where how close like, it was. No, I'm no, I know they give up a ton of points. Like, yeah, like the well, defense has gotten worse Caleb, this that's season. That's Caleb Williams. So that's Caleb. I mean, I'll no, give credit. This defense Caleb has Williams. gotten worse. This defense has gotten worse. Okay, you can say that, but what I'm saying is this team has now won three or four games in which Michael Penix has not been all world. Like, like Penix made some incredible plays, don't get me wrong, and he was really good, but his stat line is not the overwhelming uh, Michael Penix stat. Like, the, the 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 one play where he scrambles around and found the tight end on That's the edge one of the best plays of all season, right? But, but I mean, 22 of 30, 256, two touchdowns and a pick. A good day. Not an overwhelming day, and yet Washington still wins, this time beating USC 52-42. Like, championship teams find ways to win. They can adjust to the situation at hand, and Washington's done that a bunch this year, and people don't want to give them credit for it. We'll see, though. I get it. Like, I'm not going to fault anybody. No, I, I want to give them credit. I'm, not, not, I'm not, not giving them credit. Like, they're great wins. Like I said, that's a great win, but we're seeing massive chinks in the armor where I don't want – I'm just it's going to my narrative. I don't think this is a team that ends up winning the Pac-12 and going to the playoffs. There's too many flaws in that football. No, team. I know. Well, no, well, that's and that and that's what I mean when I'm saying people don't want to give them the credit. Is that everybody's expecting to lose? Everybody's expecting Oregon to beat them in a rematch or them to drop one of these ones down the stretch, and that's fine. But you know what Washington does? Kalen DeBoer and company, they just keep fucking winning. Yeah. How, how many of that in a row? I think they they should have beat that team. Like they they were the be- they were still the better team. Like USC's defense, like the offenses are a scratch. Both both of two of the elite offenses in the country. For how bad your team has been defensively, Washington, you're not at the same level as USC's defense. USC and LSU are the Spider-Man meme. Where it's oh just I, I posted that last night. I did, I did a poll. Oh, did you I really? Like, I did a poll. It's like, which defense would you rather have, USC oh, okay. or LSU? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's just like. I don't know. Do you, it, uh, well, it's the old South Park episode where they're deciding they're trying to elect. like It's either like a shit sandwich or a douche mm. or something. I don't know. It, it, it's basically 
those two defenses. They're awful. And the offenses are awesome. But again, it doesn't matter. It's a team game. Mm. That's what we are learning more and more. You have to be complete. And that's where I like Washington. I think Washington is complete. But, you know, we'll see. Fuck you. What do you mean? Wait, you not watch their defense. How You can't say they're a complete football team. Their defense is not good. Their defense has literally won them games this year twice when uh, when Michael Penning Jr. didn't even throw a touchdown. So fuck off. And then what are you talking about? The defense came up with the plays to beat Oregon. What are you talking about? Like, ah, uh, y'all. Mm, I can't. I can't. I cannot with everybody. You have your opinions. I got mine. You got yours. I don't think it's a good. I think it's. I think it's an average defense. I mean, is it good enough for them to continue winning? Like, yeah, if your offense yeah. is excelling, but like, is it good enough yeah. to win a championship? I don't think so. And also, they're more complete team than USC. That's what I said, and that's true. Yeah, yeah, they are. 100%. Yes. Fuck you, Aaron. I'm not letting you back on this spike ball. Um. All right, what do we got next? Oh, now we arrive. Here we mm. go, boys. Congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs. Beating Mizzou in oh, Athens. See, this, you're just worried about brands. Brands. Oh, it's Missouri. Champion, you can't give them credit. It's just Missouri. <laughs> it's not a great win. It's Missouri. Uh, no, no, no. Chill out. Don't put words in my BS. mouth. I, I, I started a little flippant, but this is a great win for Georgia. Yeah. Um, they they looked. Uh, I'm starting to. You know, Carson Beck is starting to get good enough to where, um. If you're playing against him, every time he drops back, you're a little concerned, right? Yeah. Like he feels like he's really seeing the entire field, making great decisions. I do, but but here's the weird part about this game, though, Aaron, and I want your opinion because it felt like Georgia was dominating, but not pulling the away. score never reflected it. So, mm -hmm. like, why, like, what, what was going on there? What do you think happened? Because it did feel like Georgia had firm control of the game. I don't know. See, I, I didn't. I never. See, I'm torn on that because I, I I never felt Georgia was in doubt of winning the game. Like there's never been like, uh oh, but, but yeah. I never felt like Georgia was either pulling away though too. No, that's what I'm saying. They weren't pulling away, but that's yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. But it felt like they were in firm control, like arguably like dominating that's, the that's, game. I think that's just Georgia this year. They're not. This is not the same team, and and I thought it had the potential to be one of the you know. I don't know how you want to rank the past three seasons of Georgia football. Like where would they end up falling between, you know, two of the best defenses we've ever seen in a really capable offense and where would they fall in that spectrum? And they're definitely third on the list. They're, they're, they're finding ways to bend, but don't break on defense. And I think that's the biggest thing is like, they're giving up like first, their first drive of every single game. It's like, might as well just give the team seven points. Huh. Just give them well, seven points. Like team yeah, scripts, like, all start. their best plays. They go down there, they score, then Georgia kind of figures out how to slow them down, but it's not been dominant. The defense line's not been dominant. They've been slacking against the run. Teams have been able to get the edge against them. And yeah, are we concerned are able to Cody teams are the ball. Teams are we concerned? The ball. Are we concerned? Like, okay, because everything starts to become concerned. about Alabama for Georgia at this point, right? And so you see Cody Trader go for 22 and 112. Brady Cook had some success at times. And you're like, okay, what if that's Jalen Milrow mm -hmm. and McClellan? What does that look like? Are you concerned about George? I am concerned. You should be concerned. I don't think I, I, this is this is a defensive line that is good. It's not elite. There's not a game wrecker on that side. They struggle at times to get after the quarterback. They had some success first floor. So you kind of felt like, okay, right, man, are they are they turning the corner a little bit? I think that was more just Florida's not very good up front, and they've kind of shown us that the entire season. Like this is, it's just it's 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 a good defense. It's a really good defense. It's not elite, and they're going to give up yards, and they're going to give up time of possession, and it's just going to, it's going to, and I think that's the other thing too. Like when I watched this game live, it felt like a pro game. A lot of running the football. The clock was yeah. running. Like this was the perfect example of like these new clock rules. If you have two good offenses kind of moving the ball methodically down the field, the game's going to fly by. Mm -hmm. Like the game is going to fly by. It's going to limit possessions and it's going to, to turn into a lower scoring game. And that's just what it what it turned out to be. Like this felt like a more of a Sunday game than a Saturday game to me. Uh, yeah, and and, and and what's crazy is even though it felt like Georgia was in firm control, I mean, Mizzou had the ball there late, down six with an opportunity, and then just a inexplicable decision by um, Brady Cook. It just felt like his brain short-circuited for a second. I Ooh, love seeing the pick. Kind of throw it and you're falling backwards, and you're like, I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm yes, yeah, 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 and yeah. I don't have the right balance. 
or 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 base to do it. I'm not Patrick Mahomes, so it's just not going to come out good. And then, boom, time Big slows pick. down, and you know yep. you're fucking up, but your body's still going through the motions, it's and you can't stop late. it from fucking too up. Too late. And zero still, stack I mean, house. Bam. And nobody like. Uh, Mizzou fans, I don't know how this will make them feel, but I still, I mean, you got to come away impressed if you're a Mizzou Hell fan yeah. with what Eli Drinkwitz is building to go into Athens and to have the ball down six in the fourth quarter with an opportunity to potentially win the game to run the ball like you did. That's, uh, I mean, because it's 10 and 2. This, 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 this is a 10 and 2 football team. Yeah. They, which should, is they crazy. should take care of business the rest of the way. Like Tennessee is going to be interesting next week. Like, can you emotionally put this game behind you and get ready for Tennessee that's, you know, all of a sudden looking a little bit better offensively, but nine and three at worst, I would expect 10 and two. That's a hell of a season. And you had two close losses versus two of the, the best programs in the sec brand. Dog, dog, how, how, how are dog fans feeling about? Oh, myth. I, I said this last week, this was the game that concerned me more because okay. Missouri is more balanced. Missouri has a good defense. Missouri has a good offense. Missouri can run the football. Missouri can throw the football. Like they're the better. You talk about complementary football. Missouri is more complementary than Ole Miss. That's true. Ole Miss is offense, 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 offense and we saw I mean AM's offense has been horrific this year. Not no, a and a- 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 went up and down the field. They I mean at the end of that game they were just running him over. They're running. Yeah. Like I I think you know, Georgia will be able to get enough stops and their offense will be able to kind of do what they want with Ole Miss's defense, where I felt like, okay, Missouri can play good defense. Missouri can play good offense. You know, that balance can make this thing a little bit more interesting than what I think the next two weeks will look like for Georgia. Well, it's going to be an exciting finish, folks. What a kickoff to turkey season. Some big programs survive. Some fall. Tigers are dead in the water, boys. But mm. hey, yeah. Mm. You know what, though? Fuck Georgia State. They're about to catch these hands next week, dude. Uh, have you called a Georgia State game this year? I feel like I'm you not. Have. not. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, all right. That'll do it for today's show. Uh, please, 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 y'all like and subscribe to the channel. The road to 8K marches right along. First off, you have Florida next before Georgia State. So don't overlook the Gators. I know they had oh, a. Oh, what the fuck? No, 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 no. Sorry. That, no, I had a conversation at the bar last night and I was talking about how Florida's next. And some guy was like, no, we got Georgia State next. So I was like, oh, no. okay. Never mind. I'm wrong. No. Florida. Oh, fuck yeah, then. Let's go, dude. I'm ready to fuck up that little. I, it, it, I'm not a Florida fan. Florida's not going to go bowling. My. I'm not Gosh. a Florida fan, and it pisses me off that they let Graham Mertz wear 15. Like, I want to yeah. beat Florida just so Billy Napier has to learn a lesson about letting Graham Mertz wear motherfucking 15. Mm. Fuck you, Billy Napier. How is that not retired? retired? I don't know. It's ridiculous. How is that not retired? It's ridiculous. It's the greatest anyway. player that's ever come through those doors. Heisman um, Trophy winner, multiple national champion, and you allow someone to wear that jersey. No, not not even just someone. Okay, this ain't some yeah. big five star that you had to convince to come hey, to school. You want to hear a funny story? Graham motherfucking Mertz. Hey, so I won. Multi- well, I was a starter for one state championship. I played defense. The other one, uh, like Mister Florida. This was in high school. Mister Florida broke all these records. Over the summer, some sophomore slid in my DMs. Some kid transferred from another school. Played JV football, had like five catches as a, a freshman. Slid in my DM and said, Hey, Mr. Murray, I just transferred the plant. Can I, uh, can we bring your number out of retirement so I can wear number 11? I've worn it my entire life. I'm like, I didn't respond to him. I'm like, dude, hell no. Like, you have no oh, shit in your oh, life. What the fuck, dude? What the <laughs> fuck, dude? No fucking chance. Come on, so you, Aaron. What the fuck? You just said, why, why should this guy get 15? Like, I'm to no, play if, if Tebow 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 says, a little bit. Sure. Yeah, no, no, I know. Yes. But that's still like, you got to let, if, if a little kid asks you, dude, who was it? Was the kid end up being good? Do you know? I don't know. I haven't followed. I mean, this was this summer. So it was this, I don't even know if he started. Like, he was like. That was this summer? It was this summer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Aaron? You're a father of two, an adult. Surely you could be like, ah, sure, kid, whatever. Go ahead. No, yeah, if he oh. balls out, if he balls out this year, maybe I'll reconsider it for his junior senior season. I gotta go back and look at the stats. Oh I can't be having God. anyone rock number eleven. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. That's fair. That's fair. We'll look at his stats and then we'll come to a snaps team decision about whether or not he gets to wear your jersey. Um, that's so fu- that's so funny. I thought this was from like way long ago. Uh, wow. All right, that'll do it for today's episode. Shout out to Pat Gunther, uh, helping produce this, get it out. Chris Tran, the entire Snaps team, Adam Gracia, Danny Cardenas, Christian Hunter, 
Uh, shout out to our guy, Ryan Brumley, who's working back from paternity leave. Congrats on the new boy. Um, I'm just going to keep fighting shingles, you know, just one day at a time. I'll be healthy again one day. Never know when. Um, but yeah, please like, subscribe, rate, review the pod, everything. We love you, and we'll see you, remember, live every day during the week. Uh, well, actually, right now, Monday through Wednesday. It'll we'll, The schedule will be more filled soon. But live uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, noon central, youtube.com. We love you. Have a great day.